Hey, what is up guys and welcome back for another Remnant 2 video. Today we'll be looking at one of the new weapons that came with the recent DLC, which is the Monarch. Now this weapon is very, very good. Don't overlook this weapon because of its low damage. It's actually got to be one of my new favourite weapons in the game. You can just see from the gameplay that this weapon can absolutely destroy anything. It has a very unique feature when using your mod, you can attach a harpoon onto the target and then all your rounds will track the enemy. Regardless of where they are, the tracking is crazy. You can just see that I can even look the other way and the bullets will still literally turn around completely to hit the target. Not only that, if you notice that this weapon will do anything it takes to reach the target, even if there are other enemies in your way, your bullets will pierce through them to reach the target with the harpoon. You can see here that the harpoon is set on the corruptor. But even if I attack the other enemies, the shots will pierce through them and still hit the corruptor. So even though I'm focusing down the big construct here, I am still constantly attacking the main corruptor's body as well. This is what makes this weapon so much more powerful than any of the others in the game. Not only can you easily target the enemies with your homing rounds, but with this boss encounters, you can target the small enemies while still dealing damage to the main boss as well. Also, the harpoon doesn't need to be reattached at all. Once it's on, it will stay on until the enemy is completely dead. Even in the final boss for the Annihilation, once you go into the second phase, the harpoon is still attached, so you'll always have those tracking bullets on. And the final thing to note is that your bullets do not track your harpoon. They will track the enemy. It's not like you can target a weak spot with the harpoon and all your bullets will go onto the weak spot. It doesn't work like that. Once you attach a harpoon, all the bullets will be targeted somewhat to the enemy's center of mass. It works differently on all enemies and bosses. For the one true king, it seems to attack near its chest. For the annihilation, it goes for its head. So it doesn't matter where you attach the harpoon, the bullets will always go towards a certain point on the enemy. That's probably everything you needed to know for the weapon. So now let's get into the build that I used for it. I went with the classes Gunslinger and the Challenger with the skills Bulletstorm and Rampage. The weapon isn't really a high damage dealer, so we make up for that by attacking super quickly with an insane fire rate. Both skills give us a tremendous amount of fire rate and reload speed which works great on the Monarch. On the weapon itself, I went with the Momentum Mutator to give us a good crit chance and crit damage. Then I went with the new items for this build to change it up. I went with the Nick Bone Necklace. This will reduce the status effect damage that we take and increase all of our damage by 25% while we are suffering from a status effect. We will constantly have that 25% damage boost with one of the new rings, Atonement Fold. This will have us be inflicted with bleed all the time and give us a nice 10% boost in crit chance. Then we use the Devoured Loop. Since we have a tremendous amount of crit chance and we will always be hitting those crits, we have a very good chance to reset all of our skill cooldowns. This is also the reason why we get such a high fire rate. The more you fire and the more crits you get, the more likely you are to get those skills back. Then we have the probability cord for crit damage and finally we have the Xanias Malice for weak spot damage. If you want some extra survivability, since being infected with bleed reduces all of your healing, you can swap out one of your damage rings for the alchemy stone. This will give you a boost of 6% lifesteal. Lifesteal doesn't take into account your healing effectiveness at all. So no matter how bad your healing effectiveness is or being inflicted with bleed, lifesteal will ignore all of it. And as for our relic, we go with the shielded heart, which is probably your best option since you will always be inflicted with bleed. As for your fragments, we get the ranged crit chance, ranged crit damage and ranged fire rate. As for our traits, we get fortify for more armor, swiftness for more movement speed, untouchable to increase our invulnerability window, vigor for health, Spirit for more generation, Fitness for our evade distance, Bark skin for damage reduction, Sum and Glutton for our relic use speed, and finally more points in Siphoner for light steel. And that is it for the build guys. The Monarch is an amazing weapon and you should try it out yourselves. You can get this weapon from the One True King after you defeat him. This weapon makes so many boss fights a hell of a lot easier since you don't need to target them so precisely, especially the final boss. You can just attach the harpoon and you basically will hit weak spots almost all the time. It's so easy. The only downfall of this weapon is if you are in an enclosed area, such as the second phase with the Night Weaver or the new witch boss that came in the DLC. 
the bullets still need space to retarget the enemy. If they hit a wall or a ground, then it doesn't work. This weapon does have its pros and cons, but it still makes up for it since you can tell from the direction of the bullets where the enemy always is, so it can still guide you even if they don't hit. Hope everyone enjoyed the build and found the video helpful. What are your thoughts on this weapon? Did you like it or will you try it out? Let me know. I will catch you all next time.